Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 on this Thursday morning. Uh, we're in 1 John chapter 2, verse number 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, as we just kind of are slowly working our way through the book of 1 John, we're in some really good sections of verses right here. Um, yesterday, we learned that Jesus is our advocate. Today, we're going to learn that he's something else for us as well. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. John says this, and he himself is the propitiation for the sin, for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. He himself is the propitiation for our sins. Who is the he himself that he's talking about? Well, verse number one of chapter two, it's Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ the righteous is he himself the propitiation for our sins. This is really good news for you and me, and here's why. Some people misunderstand the gospel. Some people misunderstand the cross. You see, when, um, when Jesus forgives you and me of our sin, what he's not doing is turning a blind eye to justice. Okay, God is just. God is completely just. And actually, God's grace and God's mercy does not interrupt his justice, okay? God is always just. And the way that you and I's sins are able to be forgiven is because Jesus is our propitiation. That's a word we don't use a lot in our vocabulary. It's a word that's very important doctrinally to the Christian faith, but it's a word that's only used a few times in the whole Bible. Once here, one other place in uh, uh, 1 John later on, and once in the book of Romans, we see this word propitiation used only three times total. And it is key to understanding the cross. It's key to understanding how your sins are able to be forgiven. Because when God forgives you and me from our sin, he's not saying, Hagen, I see that you're sinning. I see that you're offending me, and I'm saying it's okay. God forgiving our sin is not God saying our sin is okay. The way that God is able to forgive our sin is because our sin was paid for. It wasn't paid for by us. It was paid for some other way, and that's the key to understanding this word propitiation. Because the reality is, the Romans tells us, Romans 6, 23, Romans 6, 26 tells us the wages of sin is death. That tells you and me that sin costs something, that there's a price tag attached to sin. And the price tag that is attached to sin is death. It's separation. And here's the deal. You either get to pay for that yourself in spiritual death, eternally separated from God forever, or Jesus pays that for you through his separation that he experienced from God the Father on the cross when he was absorbing the wrath for my sin and your sin. So God doesn't turn a blind eye to our sin. God is still just in forgiving us. The way that God is able to forgive us is because Jesus Christ is our propitiation. Now, this word is important. In the um, Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, so it's the Greek, um, it's the it's the Greek version of the Old Testament, and the New Testament is written in Greek, and uh, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, but it's, it's in Greek and all this stuff. So anyway, my point is, is that in the in the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, this word propitiation is used to translate over the word mercy seat. Ah. The word mercy seat in the Old Testament, remember there in um, Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, we see that the mercy seat is the lid of the Ark of the Covenant. And it's there um, on the mercy seat where two cherubim sit, two gold cherubim. And this mercy seat with the Ark of the Covenant would sit inside the tabernacle. Later on, it would be placed in the temple. And it'd be, uh, the, the tabernacle had two sections, main sections. It had the holy place where you would first walk into the tent. Then it had a wall, a veil, and behind the veil was the holy of holies. 
And the Holy of Holies is where the Ark of the Covenant sat. And it's there where one day a year the high priest on the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice for the sins of Israel. And he would sprinkle the blood between the two cherubim on the mercy seat. So the mercy seat is the place where the blood of the sacrifice would be sprinkled so that the sins of Israel would be atoned for for one more year. John tells us here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that Jesus Christ is our propitiation, or we could literally say it this way, Jesus Christ is our mercy seat. Jesus Christ is the place where blood was shed, where blood was sprinkled for our sins to be forgiven. But unlike Israel, our sins are not just forgiven for a 360-day period, because that's how many days that are in the Jewish calendar. Our sins are not forgiven for a 360-day period. Our sins are forgiven once and forever. Jesus Christ is our mercy seat. He's the place where the blood was shed for you and I to be able to be redeemed. For you and I's sins to be able to be dealt with. That's good news for us. So Jesus, he's not just our advocate, as we learned yesterday, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. He's also our propitiation, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. And the reason why Jesus is able to be our advocate is because he first propitiated our sins. He paid for you and I's sin on the cross. And because of that, he's able to then be our defense attorney and be our advocate. Okay? This verse, though, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, doesn't just tell us that Jesus is the propitiation, though, for our sins. And don't forget, this is John writing. So John says, Jesus is the propitiation for my sin, and he's the propitiation of your sin as a believer. But he says, and this is important to understand as a Christian, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Huh. This is an important doctoral statement to understand. Because what John has just disproved here is a concept that millions of Christians have. And that's this idea of limited atonement. There are some people out there, good Christians honestly, we would call them Calvinists. They're fine people. They love God. They love his word. But they have this idea that um, Jesus Christ only died for the elect, which means his atonement is limited. Jesus didn't die for the whole world. He only died for those who would believe. John tells us here in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that that's not the case. That Jesus Christ propitiated not only our sins, those who would believe, but the sins of the entire world. And that's very important for us to grab a hold of this morning. Why? Because salvation is available to anyone. Limited atonement would teach that salvation is only av available to those who are God's elect. That God picked a certain group of people to respond to the good news. And another certain group of people he picked to say, you get to live this life. You get to live life right alongside of people who I've elected. But the people who I haven't elected are going to live life together. They're going to be in the same communities and might even attend churches. But those who only get to go to heaven are those whom I choose the um, limited atonement mindset would say, and those who don't get to heaven are those who I didn't choose. John says, no, no, no. Jesus Christ died for, the blood of Jesus Christ paid for the sins of the entire world, which means what? John 3, 16. Who gets to go to heaven? Whosoever would believe. Jesus Christ paid the penalty for the sins of humanity when he died on the cross. Jesus is the propitiation for the entire world, but he's only the advocate to those who believe. Okay? That's where we have to make the distinction. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for everyone, but he's only the advocate to those who receive his propitiationary work. Okay, once we believe in Jesus, once we receive him, once we put our faith and trust in him, 
then his propitiation applies to our lives and then he becomes our advocate our defense attorney but he's only our advocate he's only the advocate to those who believe in him but he's the propitiation for anyone 100 this is the this is the beauty of the gospel actually grab a hold of this 100 percent of the sins of humanity were paid for at the cross that's the good news that you and i get to share with people you might not even know it you could say to your neighbor or the stranger on the street or your friend who's not a believer you could say you might even not know it but jesus christ died for your sin jesus christ died for you the blood of jesus christ has paid for your sin so that you don't have to be separated from god they could say wow are you sure and you can say yes you can take him to first john chapter 2 verse 2 and say see he he's the propitiation for the whole world you say wow what do i do with that you receive him you put your faith and trust in him and then he becomes your advocate he becomes your defense attorney that's what we're trying to get people to realize we're trying to get them to to receive this free gift that he's given them but here's reality here's the here's the reality jesus christ has written the check for the sins of humanity only those who believe have cashed it though okay that's how it works but salvation is available to and is everyone going to be saved no they're not not everyone's going to be saved only those who deposit the check only those who say jesus i see that you have redeemed me i'm receiving i'm believing in what you've done on behalf of me and by doing that in the in the spiritual realm your his righteousness is then imputed to deposited to your account you've cashed the check of his righteousness in your unrighteous life everyone has a check written to them from jesus to them saying you can be forgiven when you believe in him you're depositing that check so no one will be able to say jesus it's not fair that i don't get to go to heaven because you didn't choose me no no jesus would say i did choose you i have a check right here an eternal check right here with your name on it you didn't choose to deposit it you didn't choose to believe you didn't choose to make me your advocate your defense attorney this is good news our sins are forgiven not because jesus turns a blind eye to sin our sins are forgiven because jesus paid for our sins he is our mercy seat the mercy seat in the old testament is the place where god would meet with man one day a year on the day of yom kippur the shekinah glory of god would come down in the holy of holies and um it was a very tangible experience that the high priest had with god the mercy seat is a place where god met with man and john says to us that jesus christ is our mercy seat jesus is the place where god and man can meet up because god and man used to meet up wherever in the garden of eden God and man freely had fellowship, but when man sinned, the fellowship between God and man was separated due to our sin. But Jesus Christ is that bridge. Jesus Christ is the mercy seat. He is the place where God and man can have fellowship yet again. And the reason why is because his own blood is sprinkled there so that you and I can be redeemed, so that you and I can be forgiven, so that our sins can be washed white as snow. When John the Baptist saw Jesus walking along the shores of the Sea of Galilee in John chapter 1, verse 29 in the Gospel, John proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He's not only the propitiation for us, he's the propitiation for the whole world. Salvation is offered to and available to anyone who would believe that's good news that's the message we proclaim to people you want to be saved the work's already been done come to jesus put your faith and trust in him and you too can receive eternal life and now jesus isn't just 
the propitiation for your sins, he becomes your advocate. He becomes your defense attorney. That's important for us to realize on this Thursday morning. That's the gospel in the nutshell. You've sinned. It was perfect in the garden. Man had fellowship with God. Sin separated that fellowship. Jesus Christ comes along as the propitiation and he builds the bridge to create that fellowship yet again between humanity and God. From Genesis to Revelation, I've used this several times, but it's important for us to realize. I think I mentioned it this past Sunday morning, actually. From Genesis to Revelation, this book, the Bible, it's the book about a king who would rather die than spend eternity without his people. Why? Because God's goal throughout the creation of mankind is desiring fellowship with man. God's desired fellowship with man since the garden. And that's why everything has happened in the Bible, is because God wants that fellowship back with humanity. The Garden of Eden he created as a place where he could have fellowship with Adam and Eve. Their sin screwed that up. Our sin screws that up. So what did he do? He created the tabernacle. He created the mercy seat, a place for a place for atonement to be done so that that fellowship could be reconnected. Why, that's what the tabernacle was for. That's what the temple was for. That's what the cross is for. So that God could redeem, so that God could gain back that fellowship that you and I forfeited through our sin. And the way that he's able to do that is because of this P word in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Propitiation. Jesus Christ is our propitiation. What does faith and trust mean? We have a question here real quick. What does it mean to put your faith and trust in Jesus? Um, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him. Putting your faith and trust in Him is believing what Jesus did on behalf of you. It's not just understanding it, though. So it's not just intellectually realizing that Jesus took your place. It's spiritually believing that Jesus took your place. That's what I would say putting your faith and trust in Jesus means. It's not just understanding it academically. I, I get the, the philosophical concept that Jesus took my place. No, you need that, but that's not what saves you. What saves you is spiritually receiving, spiritually realizing that Jesus, I've fallen short and you have paid the price for me and saying, I now open up my heart. I open up my life to receive that gift, to deposit that check, as we talked about earlier, that you wrote to me so that my sins can be forgiven. So that's what um, putting your faith and trust in Jesus uh, in. And it's... In the same way that, like, I'm putting my faith and trust in this chair right now this morning. I'm faithfully and trustfully believing that it's going to hold me as I'm sitting here. And that's what it means when we put our faith and trust in Jesus for eternal life. We are trusting, we are believing that he is the remedy to sin. Just like in the in the wilderness, John 3 uh John ties this picture for us together. Just like um, the, the serpent in the wilderness was lifted up, so too the Son of Man will be lifted up. And just like back in the wilderness, all the children of Israel had to do was look upon that bronze serpent and they would be healed from their snake bites. So too you and I just need to look upon Jesus in faith there as he's lifted up on the cross on behalf of us. And the, the, the bite of, not a serpent, but the bite of sin in our life is healed as well. Jesus is our propitiation. He's paid the price for you and me. That's why we're able to go to heaven. You receive that. He becomes your advocate, your defense attorney. You get saved in that moment. Your eternal life starts at that moment. You're saved. Eternal life lasts forever. It doesn't start when you die. It starts when you're saved. Good, good stuff to talk about today. I could spend a lot of time in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. They're crucial Christian doctrinal stuff, and you can get really, really deep if you want, but, but we've covered it. You understand 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, if you've listened to today and yesterday's message, realizing that Jesus defends you and that Jesus is your propitiation. 
he paid for your sin. That's why God can forgive you. God is not turning a blind eye to your sin. God is completely just. The reason why God is able to uh, the reason why God is able to justify you in His sight is because His Son paid for that. That's what propitiation means. He's our mercy seat, the place where God and man can come together again and meet. It's Jesus Christ. That's where fellowship, that's where the relationship happens. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your love and your grace. And Jesus, thank you that you are the propitiation. Lord, that you have paid for our sins. But Lord, you're not just the propitiation for our sin. Lord, your word says this morning that you're the propitiation for the sins of the entire world. And God, I pray that we would just grab a hold of that truth. Lord, that you have died, that your blood has covered everyone. Lord, the question is, are they going to believe in that? Are they going to receive that? Are they going to deposit that check that you've written to them? Lord, thank you that us who are here today, this morning, that are believers, we've done that. Lord, we've taken the check that you've written to us and deposited into our account. So Lord, now we have your righteousness. Lord, we were bankrupt before, but Lord, now we have you in us. We have your blood that covers us and we're clothed in your righteousness. And what a beautiful truth that is. Lord, that you are a just God. Lord, that you do not turn a blind eye to sin. But Jesus, you made a way when there was no way. And the way that you did it is by dying on the cross for every single one of us. And I pray that today, Lord, we would just be encouraged as we're reminded of this basic fundamental truth, Lord, of Christianity. Jesus, that you died for us. And that's why we're justified in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great Thursday. We will see you um, tomorrow morning as we continue on in 1 John chapter 2. Propitiation. Big word. Important word. Key word to you and I being forgiven. Jesus Christ took our place. The, the wrath of God that you deserve, Jesus absorbed on the cross. And because of that, you are redeemed. You're adopted into his family. Good, good news to talk about on this Thursday morning. Hope you guys have a good day. We will see you tomorrow live at 555.